This is going to be a brief overview of the structures of the vertebrae. First off, we have the cervical vertebrae. A few terms you'll want to know with this. There is the atlas bone and the axis. These two pictures are showing the axis. This is an anterior view and this is a superior view. Excuse me, this might be a posterior view. And then just a normal cervical vertebrae. So this is your first cervical vertebrae and the second, and then the other five, since you have seven cervical vertebrae, look similar to this one here. So on the axis, we have this structure here, which is called the odontoid, odontoid or the dens process. And that is what your head swivels on when you turn your head. This allows you to move your neck side to side and turn to look at things. And then in this superior view, you can see it here as well. But we also have the bifid spinous process here. So with all the rest of the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae, this is just called the spinous process. But on this axis bone, it is called the bifid spinous process. In the cervical vertebrae, you can see these holes here on the transverse process. These are called the transverse foramen. That is a unique structure to the cervical vertebrae. The thoracic and lumbar do not have that structure. Next is the thoracic vertebrae. You have 12 of these. The best way to tell the difference between a thoracic and a cervical or a lumbar, they don't have those transverse foramen and they have these really long diagonal spinous processes in the back here. They also have something that's unique to just thoracic vertebrae because the thoracic vertebrae are in your chest cavity where your ribs are. So they have this coastal facet where ribs attach to it on the transverse process here. There's the coastal facet. And this of course being the body in the superior view. This is a posterior view. You can see the lamina here and the transverse processes, the superior articular facet, the inferior articular process. You can see those here as well. With the lumbar vertebrae, the biggest difference is that they are a lot bigger. They're a lot hardier. These processes here look a little more stubby, like the difference between the thoracic spinous process here and the thoracic spinous process is pretty significant. They still have the superior articular facet and process and inferior articulate facet and process. They also have a body, but it is much, much larger. The transverse processes don't have those costal facets. And yeah, just general features that are common between cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. There's quite a few of these, so I'll go a little bit slower. In all of these pictures, you can see the body of the vertebrae. So this section here that stacks one on top of the other, where in your body it has these discs between, you say, you know, you've heard people have um, herniated discs. That's where those discs go. So the body is what stacks on top of each other, this big section here. We also have the inferior articular facet and process. Talked about those a little bit in the previous photos. So here is the inferior articular facet. And then just like in the mandibular condyle, we had a process leading up to that condyle. So the facet is just the surface where these bones meet together here. But the process is just that section of bone before we get to the facet. So make sure you keep those straight in your mind. Make sure you know the difference between those two. Next, we have the inferior vertebral notch. So I wanted to include this picture because it shows this very well. The inferior vertebral notch is on every single vertebrae. Be careful that you don't confuse because when they're stacked on top of each other, you may think this is the inferior because it's the inferior vertebrae. But if you were to, excuse me, isolate just the one bone, you can see here that this would be the inferior vertebral notch. And then we have the superior articular facet and process. So just like the inferior, except they're on the top of the vertebrae. So this here is the superior articular facet. 
and then the section of bone leading up to it is the process, the superior articular process. Now the superior vertebral notch, just like the inferior, we have the superior vertebral notch. Again, if you were just to isolate it, it's just this little section here. And then we have the intervertebral foramen. So you can't identify this with just a singular isolated bone because obviously all we can see is the notch. There's actually no foramen here. But when you connect the two, when they're stacked on top of each other, the inferior vertebral notch and the superior vertebral notch come together and form this intervertebral foramen. Next is the lamina and the pedicle. So these are sections or processes of bone that connect, well, I'll explain it <laughs> better in a second. Sorry, so the pedicle starts right here and it connects this body to this, these transverse processes. So the pedicle is what connects the body to the rest of it. The lamina right here connect the spinous process to the transverse process. So lamina and pedicle, they have similar functions in connecting these structures together, but don't get them confused. That can be tricky. In this side view, we can take the pedicle here and the lamina here, and we make this line like this, and we call that the vertebral arch. So it just forms this curve here between the pedicle and the lamina, and that is the vertebral arch. We've talked about spinous processes, how they're long and angular on the thoracic. They're short and stubby on the, um, on the lumbar, and then they're much smaller on the cervical vertebrae. We've talked about transverse processes and how only on the thoracic vertebrae do you find this costal facet where ribs attach. And I think that's it for the vertebrae. If you have any questions, you can email me or this video will also be in the discussion board. So put your questions in the discussion boards, discuss with other students, and happy studying.